12 most unusual deaths. Truck hit a pothole, and one of the bricks it was carrying shot out like a missile toward a passing car. Yo, I can't show you the dash cam footage, but the brick smashed through the windshield, striking Olga Galkovich, the passenger in the front seat, at high speed. The blow hit her right temple. Two hours after being hospitalized, Olga passed away. It reminds me of the most horrifying scene Yo. from the Final Destination movie, only in real life. And this could have been avoided if the truck driver had secured the load properly. Still, that's not even the strangest face. You know what? Final Destinations ruined it for me. Like driving, I can't drive behind these kind of trucks, bro. Like if I'm behind one, I'm no longer behind it. I'm speeding to go past it, I ain't gonna lie. Properly. Still, that's not even the strangest fatal incident caught on camera. I've compiled it, a list of the most bizarre tragic events for you. But first, a heads up. As always, viewer discretion is advised. The year 1984, a beetle infestation ravaged. You know what? I don't agree with people speeding, bro. But that is the only time in my books you're allowed to speed. And I think cops should understand as well. Is when you're going past those trucks, mate. Like, I don't care, bro. I do not care. If I'm behind it and I'm going past it, I'm flying. I'm like a race car driver going by that. Bitched hundreds of acres of I Colorado mean, forests. The Colorado State Forest Service hired an experienced pilot, James Jeb, along with his assistant, Ronald Hugh Willman, to film the aftermath from above. <laughs> so on August 10th, they mounted... Yo, Chris, that's not a good reason, bro. I speed by one a few days ago for Louisville 2. Oh, wait, you mean a truck. I thought you meant just speeding in general. I was going to say, bro, I'm not a speeder, bro. I was going to say. I was going to say, you can't get pulled over the cops and be like, yo, lose speeds too, you know what I mean? So, like, let me off. Mounted a work. camera on their Cessna L19E and took to the skies. At first, everything was but going yeah, smooth until the pilot realized he'd misjudged the weather conditions. The air density that day over the Colorado forests was higher than usual, making it harder for the plane to climb. The pilot tried three times to regain control and gain altitude, yet the plane began spinning uncontrollably, spiraling Hell down. No. James and Ronald crashed to their deaths. Hell the wreckage no. and their bodies weren't found until three years later. The camera, however, captured these final moments before the crash. It wasn't until 20 years after the tragedy that the families of the deceased decided to release this footage, hoping it would serve as a reminder to other pilots of the importance of thorough pre-flight checks. Now, it's not just in flight that we need to stay vigilant. Even a simple car ride requires attention. The year 2017. Yo, I actually hate seeing the plane crash ones because I'm actually scared of planes, bro. I hate seeing them. 23-year-old Sitora Baratova, a resident of Tatarstan, was live streaming on social media there's nothing wrong with wanting to become internet famous. But in Satora's case, there was one critical detail. She was live streaming while driving her Daewoo Matisse. Yeah, that might the girl be was singing along to the music playing from the speakers, asking her viewers what they were up to. And every three to four seconds, she glanced at her phone, hoping to see the comments. Suddenly, Satora veered off the road. Her light smile vanished, replaced by fear in her eyes. She tried to steer back onto the road, but failed. The phone started shaking violently and you could hear a scream and the brakes screeching in the background. That's because she had driven into oncoming traffic and collided with the PAS bus, you which crushed idiot. her car. The final moments of the live stream- Louis be scared to fly to America, take a cruise there? No, no, I've flown loads, bro. I, I don't even know how many times, more than 20 times. I will go on planes, but I'm still scared of them, you know what I mean? But I will go on them. Dream show her body hanging out of the right side door window. Satora lost her life on the spot while the bus driver and one passenger were injured. This happened just one minute after she started the live broadcast. That's why you got At that attention. moment, several of her friends were watching the stream, never expecting to witness their friend's death That's online. Why you got so attention. never get distracted by your phone while driving, or you might end up harming yourself and others in the chase for likes. This isn't the only gruesome story where someone risked their life for an exciting video. A 29-year-old man stopped by a construction site to film a building demolition. Suddenly, debris flew straight at him. And I'm not even talking about the man in the shop, Why is but he about there? the cameraman. From the video, it's clear he didn't realize the danger. And the wait, 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 wait. How do you not realize the danger? You stood there looking straight at it, bro. Like, you're there looking... Like, what are you doing? It's clear he didn't realize the danger. And the workers didn't warn him to stay out of the danger zone. Usually during demolition, a barrier should be set up 
but if there isn't one, the safe distance you should keep is about twice the height of the building being demolished. The injuries this man sustained were too severe. So this footage was captured just- Yo, I'm not being funny, bro. But who in their right mind think this is okay to stand at the demolition zone? Like, bro, you're risking it a bit too much, mate. Just moments before his death, it looks like something out of an action movie. Yet the oh next video resembles a scene from an epic blockbuster even more. The year 2022. The US 75. Wait, did that, did that attack the cameraman and not the guy in front? It looks like something out of an action movie. Look. Yet the ne next video. See, the cameraman got it as well, bro. Cameraman got it as well, bro. Resembles a scene from an epic blockbuster even more. The year 2022. Damn. The US 75 overpass in Fairview, Texas was packed with traffic, including an 18 wheeler with a trailer. Suddenly, it collided with another vehicle and burst into flames. Right, what is this the blazing James truck Bond? spun out of control. Another car's dash cam captured terrifying footage as it flew over the concrete barrier and plummeted onto the street below. The black smoke was visible for miles. The driver passed away instantly, and Fairview and Allen first responders worked to secure the area for other drivers. It was the cameraman that died, not the guy in front. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. I feel like the cameraman was kind of far. He just got very, very unlucky. Bro, boy, the cameraman did get unlucky. The fact that he died and not the person in front. This is yet another story that underscores the importance of being vigilant on the road. Keep a safe distance, especially from large trucks. Now, while you don't always think about how dangerous the job of a truck driver can be, the next story is about an undeniably risky profession. Yoda Lipsky was a Russian-Israeli diving instructor on April 28, 2000, he dove into the infamous Blue Hole, located off the hole. coast of Egypt in the Red Sea. Oh, that's pretty. This underwater sinkhole, a full 110 meters deep, is the deadliest in the world. Oh, never Estimates mind. suggest between 130 to 200 divers have perished here, earning it the nickname Diver's Cemetery. Okay, why and yet would you go no one has been able to pinpoint why tragic incidents keep happening here. Dis um, I know, there's aliens down there robbing them and killing them. Bite this. The Blue Hole 100%. is a dream destination for thrill seekers who love to take on challenges. Yuri Lipsky was confident in his skills, but during his descent, something went wrong. For some reason, Yuri was descending too quickly and couldn't slow down. This can happen due to losing buoyancy control, equipment failure, or sheer panic. An uncontrolled descent is ex- Yo, chat, I would never understand it, bro. Like, I get adrenaline is a thing, yeah, and people enjoy it, the thrill, right? But I will never understand sitting here one day going, oh, i got an amazing idea. I'm going to scuba dive in a place where everyone dies. Like what? Like, bro, I don't, I don't get, I don't, like, I don't get that. I don't get that. Extremely dangerous as a rapid increase in depth leads to a quick rise in pressure. Like, like, bro, there's a lot of war on the planet. Scuba dive somewhere else, no? This can cause nitrogen narcosis, a condition where a person feels as if they are intoxicated. Their thinking, coordination, and decision-making abilities are impaired. In Yuri's underwater footage, you can see the camera start to shake, indicating he was beginning to panic. Off camera, you can hear his labored breathing. Suddenly, the video shows Yuri removing his regulator, which supplies air from the tank to the diver. In other words, he got rid of his only source of air. But why? It what? then becomes clear that he was probably trying to inflate his buoyancy compensator with the air that was probably left in his tank. He was likely doing everything he could to try to ascend to the surface. However, under the influence of nitrogen narcosis, he couldn't quickly assess the situation. Yuri was consumed by the blue hole. The fact that all of this was recorded on a camera that should have stopped working at depths below 75 meters made his death one of the most famous diving fatalities in the world. Mad. To prevent situations like this, it's crucial to thoroughly check your equipment, control your buoyancy, dive with a partner, and avoid depths beyond your experience level. However, it's not just diving. Any extreme hobby can have tragic consequences. 
In June of 2003, 38-year-old biker David Holmes was riding along the A47 in Honingham, Norfolk, at a speed of around 156 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, in the UK, the maximum allowed speed on highways yeah, is 113 allowed. kilometers per hour. David was enjoying the adrenaline rush, completely unaware of the price he would pay for it. David approached an intersection where a Renault Clio was moving, but the biker oh. was going too fast and didn't have time to do oh. anything to avoid the collision. And the car driver didn't even see him to slow down. The final dramatic moments of David Holmes's life were captured by the camera oh. mounted on his helmet. Yo, I can't lie. Like, bro, I know this motorbike is breaking the laws and he should not be going that quick. But yo, this car is the main reason he's dead. Because I'm thinking now, if I'm in that car, you can clearly see he's coming at you. Like, even if he was slower, you're not going to cross that. You're not going to cross that. You know what I'm saying, chat? Like, even if he was going to speed limit at this distance, you're not going to cross there. You're just not. Captured by the camera. You're just not, chat. You know what I mean? But he should be going that fast, bro. He should be going that fast. Mounted on his helmet. And this is how his bike looked yeah, after the crash. Don't help. Just imagine the injuries David himself sustained. The deceased belongings, along with the camera, were handed over to his mother, Brenda Holmes, Damn. who was devastated, especially after watching the video. However, Brenda allowed Norfolk and Suffolk police to use the footage of her son's fatal... Yeah, no, chat, what I'm just saying is, like, yo, he definitely should be going that speed, right? But the car was in the wrong as well, because I'm putting myself in the car situation. That distance, the car shouldn't have been pulling there. He, he shouldn't have pulled out there. He shouldn't have pulled out there. He definitely shouldn't. Even if the motorbike was going the speed limit, you still shouldn't pull that. That's risky, bro. Accident. As part of a safety campaign, Brenda explained that she often sees young guys on bikes yeah, and would like to tell them, think about your mothers and your family if you don't think about yourselves. Ah. This again confirms that road speed limits are set for a reason. Remember that breaking them isn't only illegal, but also extremely dangerous for both the driver and other road users. And yes, I know plenty of other stories where extreme hobbies had tragic consequences. The year 2012, Tbilisi, Georgia, yeah, charity true, rope James. jumping competitions. This extreme sport involves jumping from a height while being attached to a rope. Nope. Unlike bungee jumping, nope. where the rope is elastic and bouncy, a nope. regular rope is used here. Participants of the event jumped off a bridge near the high-rise building, the Ivana Javakashvili Tbilisi State University. Bro, that is a fucking mouthful right there. A bridge near the high-rise oh, building, I gotta try the that. Ivana Jav Ivana Ivana Javakashvili Tbilisi State University. Javakashvili Tbilisi State University. Jesus, the bridge is 50 meters tall. Golga Galatiani was frantically passionate about jumping and even considered a veteran of the sport. He attended the competition with Miriam, a girl he had been chatting with on Facebook for a long time. She was fascinated by his bravery and that Goga wasn't afraid to leap into the abyss from great heights. Bro, where's he just gone, Dad? Bro, I've never bungee jumped, but surely you're not meant to like swing like that. What if he hits under the bridge? Fascinated by his bravery where's and that he, Goga just, wasn't afraid to leap like into the abyss from great heights. Suddenly, he suggested Miriam to jump together, saying it would be so romantic. The girl agreed. The couple wasn't worried about their safety, as the jumps were organized by experienced thrill seekers from the extreme team, led by the legendary mountaineer Badzina Gudzabidzi, who had climbed Everest several times. However, it's unclear how they allowed the couple to jump together on a single rope, which is a severe violation of safety rules. Goga and Miriam stood on the bridge railing. The climbers attached the main and safety ropes to them, checked the braking equipment, and the couple embraced and smiled as they leaped off the bridge. Yet when Goga and Miriam reached the very bottom, the rope snapped. And so did the safety rope. Instead of hanging above the ground, both thrill seekers fell onto the massive rocks of the dried up water channel below. Miriam lost her life instantly, while Goga passed away after the ambulance arrived. As it turned out, in recent years, tandem jumps from this bridge have become a popular pastime among Tbilisi's youth. Lovers tested their feelings and trust in one another this way. Hey, Still yo, fuck. Fuck that. Bro, I ain't, I ain't doing it by myself. Never mind with my partner. I, bro, you mad. You mad. Crazy.
Bro, if Izzy came up to me and said, oh, I want to do this really romantic thing and go bungee jumping, I'm saying to her, if I had a new boyfriend, you really want to do it that bad? If you want it to be so romantic, go with someone else. I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll, I'll record it. I'll record it. Go. Have a great time. Still, tandem jumps are more dangerous due to the increased load on the equipment. Hell no. With that being said, experts determined that the rope at this location could withstand a load of up to five tons. The safety ropes and braking belts were also supposed to help avoid tragedy. But why they failed remains unknown. But Zini Gudzabidzi, the owner of this jumping business, stated that he was ready to take full responsibility. So think twice before risking your life because safety is not guaranteed, even with Yo, listen, bro, I wouldn't do bun bungee jumping yet, but if I had no choice and do it, I'm definitely doing it over water, bro. Bro, people that do it over land are just fucking crazy. Because over water, like, I get it, bro. Like, if you hit water wrong, it does, it's like, Hitting concrete, yeah? I know people is going to say that. But you have more of a chance surviving. You have, some, you have more of a chance surviving. You know what I'm saying? You have more than concrete, mate. So think twice before risking your life because Hell safety no. is not guaranteed, even with professional equipment and well-known instructors. Extreme sports always carry an element of risk, but sometimes death awaits even those who just came to enjoy the spectacle. The year 2023. 63-year-old Wagner Rubens attended the Atopolis Aviation Music Festival in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Among the many attractions, he chose the Air Acrobatics Show. Eight parachutists jumped from the plane and performed various tricks right in the air. One of them did a loop. In an eyewitness video, you can see how the parachutist suddenly lost control of his equipment and started spiraling out of control, heading toward the crowd. People scattered in different directions, but everything happened so quickly. At high speed, the parachutist struck several spectators and oh then crashed with full force into Wagner. The man died on the spot and several others were taken to the hospital with injuries. It is essential- Wait, 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 wait hold up. So the skydiver booted someone in the head and killed him. I got many questions, bro. I got many questions. The first one is, why did the person watching the skydiver not move out the way? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, if I'm there watching a skydiver, like, fucking come in hot, I'm not just going to go, oh, babe, I think he's coming to me. Like, bro, you're going to fucking move. You're going to move, are you? You don't think he saw it coming? Wait, how? They're watching him, though. How would you not? How would you not? Like, they're, wa they're watching him skydive. Like, you would know he's coming in hot. I don't know, mate. Well, probably. I don't, I don't know, bro. So always to maintain a safe distance from risky events, even if the organizers assure you that everything is under control. My. Extreme sports always carry potential danger. And now I've saved the most dramatic story for last. Oh, you reckon he was just walking and minding his own business, not watching the event? In that case, very unlucky story whose fatal outcome could have been avoided. December 4th, 2016 was both the happiest and most horrifying day in the life of Rosemary do Nascimento Silva from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Okay, why? On this day, she was supposed to have a grand wedding, and okay. Rosemary wanted to make a spectacular entrance to surprise her groom and guests. Okay. So she hired a helicopter to arrive at the ceremony site in style. On board with Rosemary and the pilot were- Yo, I'm telling you right now, if she lands this helicopter and chops off all the heads of the guests, I'm gonna- Bro. <laughs> it ain't no way, bro. Her brothers and a photographer who captured this video. In it, the whole group, in high spirits and eagerly anticipating the celebration, ascends into the sky from Osasco to head to Sao Lawrence de Serre, where the wedding was to take place. The footage shows that the weather was good at the time of takeoff, okay. but soon it changed dramatically. The video with the bride does not contain the beautiful shots she wanted of flying through the clouds. Instead, okay. everything around them seems to be in a fog. Due to such poor visibility, the pilot lost his bearings. He then tried to get the helicopter back on course, only worsening the situation. Shit. The pilot likely relied more on GPS and paid less attention to other vital instruments, such as the altimeter, which measures altitude, or the gyroscope, 
which determines the helicopter's position in space. Eventually, the helicopter lost altitude and began to fall. The footage shows only the camera shaking and the passenger screams in the background. The bride never made it to her beloved. The helicopter crashed two kilometers from the ceremony site. One of Rosemere's relatives found the broken camera at the scene. The memory card remained intact and he handed it over to the police for investigation. However, the results haven't been made public. It's unknown why the pilot decided to continue the flight in adverse conditions. Perhaps the bride didn't want to cancel the planned surprise. Or maybe the pilot was confident he could still land the helicopter. Yo, that's fucked, bro. Imagine someone coming up to you on your wedding day and going, oh, the bride ain't making it today, she died. No, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Yo, I don't know, bro. You know helicopters? You know helicopters? I'm staying clear from helicopters. I swear there's a helicopter crash every month. I swear. Like, like, listen, I got a fear of planes, yeah? But there's barely any crashes. Planes are really safe. You know what I'm saying? But helicopters... Bro, they go down every month, bro. Stay clear from them. Stay clear from them. So you should know that flying in helicopters in cloudy weather and fog is strictly prohibited. If conditions become dangerous, the best decision is to postpone or change your plans. Yeah, bro, it's not Which worth incident it. shocked you the most? I mean, not just in my video, but on the entire internet. Yeah, Comment true, on the lessons you've learned from this. Personally, I'll them. never step into an elevator while looking at my phone again. Why? Subscribe to my channel. Many more videos here might just save your life. Wait, why? I always walk into an elevator with my phone out. You're not going to tell me? You're not going to tell me?